Hello viewer, it's Tonalux again and today I'll be taking you through electrical installation uh, material for the solar installation part and quickly let me take you through the materials but if it's your first time please subscribe below, like, comment below this video and share with them, your colleagues and trainers and even trainees as well. So solar installation or solar home system materials uh, arranging just from, we, we are going to cover only five parts of it, the solar modules, the charge controller, the solar batteries, solar inverters and solar cables and connectors as well. So as you can see here, this is just an image of how solar installation works and uh, I'll be taking you through each component or each material one by one. So let's start with the solar modules or the ones you usually call solar panels. This their function is to produce electricity direct from sunlight uh, through the process we call photovoltaic effect. Uh, if you doesn't know what photovoltaic effect is, you can do research on it. And uh, so today I'm just covering the aspect of materials and not the aspect of principal operation and construction. So with the solar modules, we have three types of solar modules. The, the, the first two are the most common that we use, but the third one, we use it for small appliances like the lanterns, uh, solar, solar uh, mobiles, and those, in that case. So the first two, which are most common, is monocrystalline solar panels and polycrystalline solar panels. Uh, the difference is actually on the alignment of the cells. You'll see that the monocrystalline is so dark, while polycrystalline in most cases is usually like blue. And even the shaping of the square of the solar cells, the polycrystalline is perfect square, but the monocrystalline usually is in a, in a, a hexagon or something pattern. Let's go to quickly charge controller. And on charge controller, or sometimes we call charge regulator, its work is to control or regulate the charging of the battery by preventing overcharging and uh, uh, also controlling the over discharging of the battery by the appliances we have uh, different kinds of uh, charge controller or regulators so by design we have the shunt regulator we have the series regulator we have the pulse width modulation regulator or controller and then we have maximum power point tracking uh, charge controllers uh, the charge controller usually has a uh, uh, the list is six terminals. The first two usually is for the module or the panel. The second two is for the battery. And the third two is for the DC appliances, like the DC light and in that manner. And then we also have, uh, it also, you will find that others are even more advanced that even have up to eight uh, terminals. But the extra four are just for DC appliances as well. The solar batteries on the other end, we use them for storage of electrical energy generated by solar panels. And uh, we usually use batteries as backup at night. So in most cases, uh, batteries are not used in, during the day. Uh, I will tell you why when I'll be covering the hybrid or the bimodal inverter part of it. So we have different types of batteries, but I'm not going to focus on batteries like in a wide array of batteries, but I'm focusing on battery in terms of solar batteries. So the most common and the most effective is the lithium uh, ion batteries. Like the image you see in the slide is the lithium ion battery and is a 200 ampere hour battery. We also have other batteries like the nickel metal hydride batteries and the nickel cadmium batteries. And then the most common which is the lead acid batteries with which falls under flooded type, the one that has electrolyte in fluid form. The rest has paste or a, or a, the paste or a dust form, so it's usually not in liquid form. The non-flooded types, the first three. Then it's also easy. It's also good that you understand how to maintain these solar batteries. So, like ensure they're clean, properly mounted, the charging and uh, discharging. Other than just having charge control in place, have a manual controlling or monitoring system. Replace batteries that are damaged from the battery banks. Uh, for the liquid uh, or the flooded type, ensure they are always stopped up 
and they also ensure they are well pro uh, stored especially in uh, battery cages or battery boxes and then we also have the inverter uh, which helps in now in, in enable that we get the ac or the alternating current uh, for our appliances because most of appliances come in uh, in alternating current and since the solar gives dc current the direct current this essence of having ac uh, appliances in this manner so we have different types of solar inverters and in this case we have the standalone which sometimes we refer to as off-grid inverters then we have the grid inverter or sometimes we call on grid and then we have the bimodal or sometimes we call the hybrid inverter that my bimodal can take both off and uh, grid uh, install, uh, installation we also have inverters in different types of uh, in terms of wave output that's where we have the true pure sine wave inverter and then we have mod modified uh, sine wave inverter then we have the square wave a uh, power inverters but the true pure sine inverter is what we recommend you when you're doing your installation because most of our plants is re required to use a pure sine wave uh, inverters if you don't use that then you're likely to damage your appliances in one way or another we have then solar cables and solar connectors this will be my last part i'm not going to go into other things like the landons the bulbs and in that manner because we have covered that in previous but even in other material so solar cable as we talked before solar ca a cable is a as a conductor with insulation which allows current flow and this is we are allowing dc current to flow and then a connector a connector suggests for to ease the jointing and termination of the solar uh, cables together with the termination terminals so i think that's all for today uh, please take time to subscribe if it's your first time because the third part of electrical installation material is loading and that will be covering electrical uh, fence material as well as electrical machine material thank you